This conference will now be recorded. Hello, everybody. It's Lenny Murphy, and I am here with another one of our CEO series of interviews. And today, I am talking to Gary Laban, CEO of Dynata. Oh, Gary, how are you? I'm doing great today. Thank you for having me, Lenny. Uh, you know, it's it's a pleasure. Uh, absolutely a pleasure. So let's go ahead and just get something out of the way, because I'm sure that listeners will be saying, oh, he's talking to Gary. Is there an announcement pending? Um, and there is not an announcement pending. Um, so I'll let you take it from there. Well, thanks, Lenny. We, we always have announcements pending. So to be clear on that, <laughs> there's all sorts of things that we're doing. And uh, I would hope that even over the next couple of weeks, uh, folks will learn about some of the new products and services that uh, are part of those announcements. Having said that, I think the one to which you are specifically referring, um, I really don't have anything to say about. Most, uh, you know, everything that you've read is uh, rumors and speculation. It's not produced by us. We're humbled by the fact that there's a great deal of interest in the business in terms of what's going on. Uh, I think it reflects the fact that uh, we've grown and through that uh, growth have done quite well. Um, and it certainly would mean that uh, the uh, industry, the sector and those in and alongside it would be interested in capitalizing on that. But everything that uh, you've, say, you've seen so far is really kind of speculation on that at this point in time. Fair enough. And when there's not speculation, I assume that you'll let us know and we can... You uh, will, will be uh, the, among the first that we will dial up to let uh, to okay. what's going on. All right. Good to know. Uh, but that is a good segue because you make a good point. The uh, Obviously, there's a lot of interest and buzz um, uh, around the future of the industry as a whole, um, and particularly for uh, a large player like Dynata. I mean, you know, you're no longer simply a sample company, right? You're, you're If we look at the uh, just from a basis of, of revenue, uh, you'd be in the top five, six global players within the category. Um, and that is a significant achievement. So why don't we talk about that a little bit? So, you know, how did we get to this point where the company is now such a significant integral component of the entire global market research ecosystem? And not just for sample, but for lots of other stuff. Sure. Um, thanks for that. And, and I think that, um, uh, as you referenced, uh, I mean, the proud sort of legacy of the companies that formed Dynata uh, over the last 40 years, uh, 20 with Legacy Research Now and, and frankly 40 with Legacy SSI, uh, invented many parts of uh, the data-driven space of market research. Um, and that really serves as sort of the foundation and the backbone for who we are and what we're doing today. Um, and, and really what that is about uh, when I came to the company about a little over three years ago, I realized that we were sitting on this incredible first party data asset and we needed to continue to curate and grow it to realize its value in uh, the core market research sector, but that we could amortize that data across the entire marketing services continuum from media to advertising to activation and CRM and create wonderful products and services for our clients uh, who are partaking of it in market research, who would also be the same clients uh, in, in, in the other areas that we're extending uh, to, because anybody who's doing market research with us is also interested in, in, in obviously using and capitalizing on that, those insights for their, uh, their, their marketing growth as well. And so I realized that we had a great opportunity to do that, to provide incremental value to our clients. And so we set about a goal back a couple of years ago to derive about 30 to 40 percent of our revenue uh, beyond sort of the traditional data driven market research sector where we found or where we established our roots. And to do that by the end of 2020, we're about uh, about 16 months away um, and we're uh, about 25 percent of that 40 percent. So we'll eclipse the 30, the low end, and hopefully we'll get to that sort of that uh, ultimate goal of, of, uh, of diversity. And speaking of which, you know, if you think about that from a, um, uh, from a personal investor standpoint, there's always talk about diversification. And so being able to amortize our assets and diversify where those assets can be used is very valuable to the organization in and of itself. Um, and then finally to our employees. Um, being able to uh, participate in new areas of growth, both 
you know, professionally in terms of the things that our employees are able to, to, to do across sort of all of marketing, not only in market research, is really um, sort of what that journey is about. And uh, like I said, I think we're well on our way and, uh, and showing the, uh, uh, the results uh, on track that we've uh, sort of established for that goal. So when I think about the uh, kind of the marketing life cycle, it falls into three buckets. Um, and I always think of it as engage, understand, and activate. Those are kind of, you know, the big high level pieces. And research has traditionally obviously worked within the, the understand component. Um, but what I hear from you is you're using terms like uh, uh, marketing services is that, you know, the vision for Dynata is to actually be a, a data driven uh, component of that entire life cycle to engage, understand, and activate. Is that a pretty right. fair, fair summation? No, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, kind of going uh, going back to that a little bit, um, you know, my perspective on that is if we can, if the underlying data that drives each of those uh, activities, say engage, understand, and activate, can be sort of held constant, we can use the same data to drive in some way, shape, or form each of those activities, then you've got to assume that the output the, will be better because we've held constant uh, a lot of things that that heretofore have been very very much uh, variable uh, using different data for each of those activities and if that's the most important or one of the most important pieces components to any of those areas then to be able to use the same components and to to move them across each of those areas I think is is super valuable to the output of each of those areas and frankly to the unification of those areas uh, as as marketers um, you know go forward and compete in, in their own very competitive marketplaces. So we've had a lot of conversations over the past year um, uh, you and I about the idea of, of you know integrated data um, mm -hmm. and uh, how that data can be used and what does that mean for the future and how the world's changing you know regarding uh, personal data and you've made some really interesting uh, moves over the past year where you patented uh, a, a model around the data graph of linking you know first party data individual level data across multiple data sources um, uh, your marketplace functionality uh, that you've launched to mm -hmm. be able to to access that integrated data graph um, tell me a little more about what the plans are in building off of that not just in this kind of marketing services universe, but also specifically in powering new research capabilities that traditionally a company like Dynata didn't necessarily do. But now you're with the critical mix acquisition, you know, you have more assets. Kind of what's what's that look like? So uh, and thanks for that uh, segue. Um, the acquisition earlier this year of Reimagine and its associated companies, which include Critical Mix and several others, really was a way for us to take um, our business, which is, I, I'd say, rather, you know, historically rather services based and to productize many of those components so that our clients can can accomplish a number of things, um, not the least of which is sort of speed and simplification uh, and automation. And so we're on a journey uh, to take each and every one of our um, our services and and sort of address it in in those ways and either increase the 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 access to it, simplify how you can get access uh, to it so that um, our clients can benefit from that even quicker than than they have uh, in the past. One of those areas, um, is using AI to drive uh, our, our sort of product delivery. And so uh, you referenced some of the things, uh, some of the ways potentially in which we we are doing that. And, and uh, for example, using AI to help drive um, the outcome of, prod, uh, of projects. Uh, imagine, for example, the things that we're working on now around Alexa-based um, interviews. Uh, and that's sort of a start. But even that goes further by, you know, having someone do something like that and transla uh, transferring that interview in real time through our, our, uh, our voice services division so that in the midst of that, you can get a phone call and finish up the rest of that, uh, of that interview if you are, our, are a member in, in one of our panels. And so we think that those kinds of experiences uh, will produce even better results for our clients uh, going forward. 
Um, one of the things that we're working on, you referenced as part of our marketplace, which is is the, the programmatic platform to access all of our data. That's the only place to access uh, programmatically all of the Dynata data alongside the rest of the industry's data. Um, that marketplace is really part of an even larger launch um, uh, later this quarter, which is our insights platform. And so our Dynata insights platform is really about connecting all of our products and services in an end-to-end -end single sign-on fashion so that our clients can get access to each and every part of our service offering in one place and connect and, and the output of one can feed the input of the next. And so for us, we think that's the, you know, the next generation of what, uh, what we want to go do for our clients. Very cool. Well, you're, uh, you're in good company, right? The, uh, uh, you know, Cantar is moving in that direction, obviously, uh, you know, companies like Zappi, you know, back in the day though, this may be before your time, um, GMI, you know, they, they tried that many, many years ago and they couldn't pull it off. Um, and I think, and so I bring that up. One is just be careful. We don't duplicate the past. Everybody let's, <laughs> let's recognize that. Um, but secondarily, that, that that takes a culture shift from a buyer standpoint. Um, you know, the ecosystem is set up at, well as an ecosystem. You know, you're, you get your sample from here. You collect your data here. Your analysis is done here. Um, so do you see resistance um, to uh, to that vision of why? why? You know, why can't you be the Google or the Apple, right? Uh, the one single sign-on, one ecosystem to rule them all uh, model in research. Um, and so you're right, and I think historically, as I've been here over the last few years, the resistance I've actually seen hasn't been from our clients, but mechanically from our competitors sort of talking about the resistance that we might face. When we bring these opportunities in front of our clients, I think they're, you know, they're very um, eager to take advantage of them. In fact, many of our clients are informing uh, the very nature of the products and services that I've described in terms of how they're built and, and how we're delivered. Uh, at the end of the day, our, our clients really want it uh, faster. They want it simplified so that they can take advantage of it. We have had um, a, a longstanding relationship with clients uh, across all channels of distribution, not only market research agencies, but resellers of our data and especially the brands directly themselves this isn't anything new but it's something that is as you know fat, very fast growing for us because i think clients of all types are are seeing the availability of some of these op these products and services and saying this can make my life easier and so we don't see much uh sort of resistance at all uh around um uh the the uptake in this from from any of our client channels some of our clients are as i said they redistribute so they might want a white labeled version of whatever i might be describing here and others uh, want maybe a little bit more of a service layer applied to it so a lot of our products are are diy um, but we have a difm do it for me layer uh, at least if not uh, forever even just to get started with many of our clients who aren't quite re yet ready to ingest sort of the uh, or shoulder the responsibility all on their own yeah no, I, I think it's a mandatory requirement the uh I've been using, using the term managed services a lot lately with mm -hmm. uh uh kind of trying to describe that model of the the service organization that must exist because sometimes clients just want somebody to push the button um, we, we have a number of clients as you've referenced um and i don't even see in their future uh anything but a managed service layer between uh, our our products and their you know their receipt of them and because that's the way that their organization is set up uh, to do that and we'll continue to support that uh, for for forever as long as there is uptake and client demand for that. All right, so I want to be conscious of time. Uh, so two uh, three questions I guess. First, what are you most excited about uh, over the course of the next year? What do you think that th this is this is the thing that is just going to blow everybody's socks off. Well, I referenced it earlier, so maybe I already gave the big reveal. Um, but our insights platform for me is uh, is really the the beginning of that culmination where we are able to um, place the access to each of our our what has been sort of discrete sort of service offerings in in one layer 
where our clients can can really uh, take advantage of them. And it's not just about automation. It's also about uh, taking advantage of products that have been optimized for market research and passing the results of that down to uh, activation activities within our platform. And so um, that's something that, um, as I said, in the, in the fourth quarter, end of the third quarter, beginning of the fourth quarter, we'll roll out uh, and we'll continue to iterate uh, on that platform. I would say in, in, a, in a more macro sense, um, the thing that gets me excited all the time is uh, there isn't a decision that, that I can think of in, in business today that isn't driven by or required to ingest data to make it. And you know, sitting at the center of, of all of this data and of, of this kind of data that's had a rich legacy of being used for all of these data-driven decisions is sort of, sort of the sweet spot. And I, I couldn't be more excited about all the things that we'll, we are doing and that we can do um, with that. It's, it's, it's really just, uh, just incredible to be able to do that uh, and to, to, to harness that across uh, this and the entire marketing services spectrum and and from a micro standpoint if you will um, I, I'm just thrilled about what we've been able to do uh, with the business and so if you as you referenced right back uh, a few years ago uh, there were a whole lot of separate companies uh, much different in in size or scale focused on individual things and we've really been able to to create a different organization and I, I tip of the hat to the 5,000 associates around the world at Dynata who have been able to come together, not only integrate this business, but to create a, a, a wonderful unified culture that makes it just incredibly fun to come to work because we're, we're driving forward and continuing to build something that, that not only is, is bigger, but more importantly, is broader and better for our clients. Okay, so what keeps you up at night? I think uh, what I worry about, at least, or think about, uh, particularly when I'm going to bed, is is sort of um, the changing landscape around um, security and privacy. So just before we got on this phone call, I you may have seen the release uh, from Google about updating your Chrome browser because there's some some apparent uh, security problems with it. So we have two billion people around the world over the weekend are going to have to go do that. Um, and it's certainly a, a reminder to all of us about uh, the, the obligation that we have as stewards of our, of our members' data. And I think, you know, there's really three pieces to that. There's, there's trust, there for our, there's experience, and, and really there's value that we try to provide for, for our members. And without our members, we have, you know, we have nothing. It's, it's not just the three-legged stool um, <clears throat> of customers and employees and shareholders. We have a four-legged stool in this business, of course, which includes our, our members, folks who provide uh, their, their data and their insights to help drive our business. And so in terms of trust, it's really about, you know, I, I, I stay up at night making sure then worrying about making sure that we're, we're doing exactly what we say we're going to do. Some of our members only want to be involved with us for certain types of activities like market research. Others want to do uh, everything, including marketing and everything in between and making sure that, that, that we ingest and protect and offer uh, and make their data available only for the, the purposes for which they've they've agreed. Experience is huge too. So making sure that uh, there's an efficient uh, process in place. The user experience has to be one where it's not only respectful, but it's also, um, it's quick, not asking the same questions of our members time after time after time, um, remunerating them in, in timely fashion for their their insights and for their for their time. And, and, and Ultimately, you know, the, the piece that, that I also stay awake about at night and part, part of this equation is value. So creating that value exchange um, and making sure that uh, consumers feel uh, rewarded and, and valued for the time and ultimately for, for the value of their, their insights uh, that we're providing ultimately to brands who are trying to make decisions and making sure, if you will, that scale is balanced uh, at all times. I've seen in the industry over the last year um, some incredibly low pricing, which isn't doesn't strike me first as a competitive issue. Um, 
it really comes kind of comes at the heart of you know making sure and, and you know are we doing the right thing for the member are we doing the right thing for the value and being respectful of of the value that 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 any given member is providing and so those that that sort of area and as you've seen um uh, often through legislation and uh, both in Europe and upcoming next year in California and frankly probably and likely throughout the rest of the, the US um, there's uh, a lot of call to action to ensure that this is done and we need to you know a healthy combination of legislation and self-regulation I think is uh, is important well preaching to the choir as you know you know I know some guys that are working on the, the same challenges so uh, <laughs> Uh, the more the merrier, I think, in this regard. We we all can yeah. can uh, can work together to to create a better environment for the the longevity and the success of this industry. Yeah, a rising tide floats all boats. So totally agree. Yeah. All right. Uh, so last question: Holiday weekend. What are you doing this weekend? Not much. Uh, so um, I travel uh, to our offices and our to our clients. Uh, my my wife. Uh, thinks it's about 100% of the time. Um, I'll, I'll say I live in Dallas and she'll dispute that. Uh, she doesn't see me all that much. And so um, I like to uh, kind of be home for the weekend for my wife and my son. Um, sometimes she greets me at the door with a bag packed, however, ready to go. She loves to travel. So we dispute that a little bit. So this weekend uh, is uh, just fun with the family and a couple other families who are coming over to uh, enjoy the Texas heat. That's great. That's great. Well, enjoy. Thank you for your time. This was great. Always a pleasure. And uh, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Look forward to seeing and speaking with you soon. Thanks again for your time, Lenny. Oh, no problem, Gary. Thank you. Bye now.